The reason I chose to do a master's in happiness study was basically understanding the concept of happiness, not as an emotion, but something that relates to the history, psychology, economy of everything that is around us. I have a dream of learning from Tao and uh, studying under Tao. And the second that I realized Tao is offering an MA in happiness studies, um, it was dream come true for me. I was looking for an international community to join, to change my knowledge, to change our experience during the, the job in this field, the science of happiness. So I want to learn more uh, about the science behind it and the um, research behind it. And um, when, I, when I'm helping my clients or people around me with um, this um, methodologies and my learnings from it, I can really uh, stand on a solid ground. MA in Happiness Studies in a general concept is a beautiful opportunity to dive deep in understanding the most recent science about what people can do in order to create a better life for themselves, for their family, in their organizations, uh, in communities. As I get deeper into the program, I realize that happiness study is very, very important. It is very essential to a successful leader, how a great leader should look like. Everything that you learn in the MA can be used if you are a business owner, if you are a leader, if you want to use that in your family, in your house, as a coach, as a therapist, as a doctor. And it also opens a very broad pathway uh, in different careers. So many people come to a course like this because they are facing a career transition and they are not really sure where to head. This course brings a lot of perception, a lot of perspective to point them to the right direction. So many people will come after this course thinking about a new design of business, a new line of work, create applications and forms of using what they learn in different fields. One of the main components in the studies is the HAT groups, which are basically groups of people from all over the world uh, meeting together and discussing and elaborating about the different topics that we're talking about. The way the course is designed, it brings the possibility for people, even though it's online, for people to have full-on connections. So there are small groups that will be able to talk about and interact, and they, they, they have assignments that involve uh, really interacting to one another. We do have some HAD groups. So uh, I had my second HAD group. The first one was in the first semester, and now we have another one. And we have our chat. <laughs> so we, we are chatting all the time. We meet every other week. We discuss the learnings from the classes. We are we were always given um, some specific tasks to complete um, in these hat meetings. The live lectures, the group interactions, make the course very um, alive. It feels like you're in a classroom with him. We can ask questions. We can engage through the process. I've never been in a program where, at the end of an hour and a half, we are wanting more. We don't want to break. We're very sad when it has to end. And that has been consistent since week one. It allows you to, again, go even deeper of what you're studying, have certain kind of discussions, share uh, in a very accommodating and nurturing and loving environment, and learn from one another. It's not like uh, I'm here by myself and nobody's with me. Um, when we have the live webinars, we're put also into groups. And, and again, it's, it's kind of assured that we meet different people along the process. I have made friends in this program from all over the world and from all disciplines because this program attracts um, people who are in lines of work that are not necessarily, you would think, associated with happiness. It's a very big and significant opportunity to learn from other cultures and from what other people are saying and the way that they experience things. I work in this field. That's why it's important for me. Now I can say, it's all very serious. I have a master degree in happiness. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's so wonderful to see you here, to have you here with us. And we have people from literally all over the world. Peru, South Africa, Serbia, Hawaii, Iceland. Different weathers, yeah. Um, United States, Abu Dhabi, Mexico, Spain, Italy, India. Wow. Some of you 
maybe should be sleeping now because sleep is important for happiness. But no, I'm very glad, very glad to have you uh, all here with us. Um, and very glad and, and very excited to be talking about the master's degree in happiness studies. You know, uh, actually, let, let me begin by first of all, uh, letting you know what today is going to uh, actually look like. So I'm going to start talking about uh, the MA in general, essentially an introduction to, to the program. Then I'm going to hand it over to the marvelous Don Homer from uh, Centenary University, who's their senior enrollment counselor. And she'll talk about the application process. Those of you who have already started the application process know Dawn by, by now. Uh, those who haven't will we'll meet her very soon. Um, and then I'm going to move it over to uh, Henrique Bueno, whom you actually saw in the video, who is a professor in uh, the MA uh, program, who is then going to hand it over to uh, Shiri Rosenblatt Itzhak, whom you also saw in the video. She's a student in uh, our program, just to talk about the student learning experience. And then we'll have a Q&A. And in the Q&A, uh, Enrique and Shiri, um, as well as um, Ashley Michael, who's also a professor in our program. Um, and I and Don will answer your questions, whether it's about content, whether it's about the application process, whether it's about what do you do next when you graduate, um, and so on. Okay, so this is the outline. Oh, and we'll end by sharing with you a another video which um, illustrates what we do, what we experience on retreats. And I'll talk about retreats in, uh, in a moment. Um, okay, so I started by saying that I'm very excited to be here. And um, it's not trivial to remain excited by one thing. And here I want to draw on um, research from uh, positive psychology, one of the best known studies or a series of studies in the field that talk about hedonic adaptation. Here I'm going to send this over in the chat. Hedonic adaptation. Hedonic adaptation is a term that psychologists use to explain a very common phenomenon, which is that initially we're very excited by something. And then um, soon after, you know, it loses its allure, it loses its appeal. Um, so initially there is maybe a spike in our happiness based on that new thing, but then it's not new anymore and we go back to where we were before. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. You know, we get a new car and wow, the excitement of it, you know, the smell of it, you know, you know putting the, what is it, the metal, the pedal to the metal, so exciting. And then after a month or three months, okay, it's, we have a car and it gets us from point A to point B. And we see it in even more extreme cases. You know, people who win the lottery, they become wealthy overnight and they truly believe that they will live happily ever after. Not just wealthily, but happily ever after. It doesn't happen. We see it with lottery winners spike in their levels of happiness, real excitement at the beginning. It doesn't last. We see it in research with the professors who had just received tenure. They'd been working towards this for 15 years. Spiking their happiness when they get it, happier than they'd ever been before, possibly. Doesn't last. Three months later, back where they were before. So when it comes to new, um, new things, very often we experience adaptive hedonism, meaning... Temporary spike doesn't last. So when the Masters in Happiness Studies was approved, I was very excited. Um, one of the happiest days of my life. You know, this has been a, a dream come true um, for my colleagues and, and myself. And I thought, okay, the excitement will wane. It won't last because I know about adaptive uh, hedonism. And yet it's been... Um, Three years since we it was approved, uh, the first uh, program is about, the first cohort is about to graduate. 
I can't tell you how excited I am by it. Every, you know, Anna Marie in the video mentioned about, you know, not wanting the webinar to end uh, every, every, every week, looking forward to discussing new ideas. And I was thinking about it before, you know, coming on here, you know, why does the excitement persist? And, you know, it could be because there's a lot of material, so we're always learning new things together. It could be because there really are people from different cultures from all over the world. Um, it could be because of what I see week in and week out in terms of what our students are doing in the world. And that is very exciting. It's inspiring. Um, I don't know why, but the excitement continues. And um, I hope that um that, that you'll join us on um on this wonderful journey so i want to talk a little bit about this uh wonderful journey and um what i'll do is um i will share with you just uh, a few slides with with an outline of the courses and the duration and and and, and other things and I'll, I'll i'll bring a little bit of the little bit of the content again we don't have uh that long, we're not going to keep you here for longer than 10, 12 hours. No, just a few minutes. Okay. The MA essentially revolves around the SPIRE model. S-P-I-R-E. Uh, S is for spiritual well-being, physical uh, peace, physical well-being, intellectual well-being, relational, and finally, emotional well-being. I'm not going to explain each um, one of them, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on, on, on one of them uh, later on. But um, just a few words in general. So the duration of the, uh, the master's degree, which is um, offered, accredited by Centenary University, um, which uh, collabor that collaborates with the, uh, the Happiness Studies Academy, the duration is uh, 20 months. 20 months, that's uh, a total of five semesters, where um, each semester uh, is um, three, uh, three to four months long. So it's about 15, 15, weeks, uh, 15 weeks long. Um, total of 30 credits, which is pretty normal for a master's degree. Um, in terms of amount of hours, so total, it's over uh, 1,000 hours. You should be prepared to invest between 10 and 20, probably around 15 hours uh, a week uh, on this program. And this includes... Uh, attending the live webinars, which we have every week. It means uh, watching pre-recorded videos. It means reading. It means writing. It means interacting with your uh, HAT groups. HAT stands for Happiness Accountability Team, because uh, we know that when you have an accountability team, it significantly increases the likelihood of real change. And this program really is about change. You know, I wouldn't be teaching this program. By the way, I wouldn't be teaching at all if I didn't think that it could make a real difference in people's lives, that it could make a real difference in your life, in the life of those you interact with, whether professionally or personally, whether uh, in the workplace, whether in a school setting, whether in your home. Um, and I'll talk about how, how it is applied in a minute. And... Very important. It is 100% online. So you can take it um, if you're in, and we have students from, you know, China, Vietnam, Japan, and you can take it if you're, you know, in the US or Kenya or, uh, uh, or Germany. And we have students literally from all over the world taking it. Now, for the live part, the live webinar. If you cannot attend that time, we strongly recommend it, and most of the, student, of the students attend live webinars. But let's say if it's offered and it's 2 a.m. for you. When, when it is offered, it's recorded, so you can watch the recordings you know, a day later. Um, 
so and of course for the other material you do it you know when when you want to do it between you know sunday and saturday you know which is the week uh, your readings your hat meetings you'll find a convenient time for all of you to meet so it is extremely extremely flexible uh, most of our students are working while they're taking the degree, though some are um, are are not, and uh, are, and maybe they can spend a bit more time. But even a full time job, it's possible to 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 do well, to enjoy and, and flourish in program. Now, I said that I'll say something about retreats. So when we created this program, we had a real dilemma. You know, at Centenary HSA, we, we were considering three options. One option, to do the program uh, fully on-site. So people would have to come to Centenary University and to attend classes, just traditional classroom style. Second option was 100% online. A third option was hybrid. We eventually, as you can see, decided for the second option, the 100% online option. Why? For a very simple reason. So that we, the, so that more people from around the world could have access to it. Because very often, even a hybrid program is a barrier of having to travel once in a while to, um, to the location. So the flexibility of a 100% online program is, is unparalleled, of course. So we decided to go with, a, with that. However, we did not want to lose out on the benefits of in-person interactions. And there are many benefits uh, to that, of course. So what we did, what we we're doing is we offer retreats twice a year. Uh, each time it's in a different continent. So we've had it in North America, we've had it in Latin America, we've had retreats in Europe, in Asia, and we will continue having in different countries, different places. And these retreats are not mandatory. In fact, you know, you can go through the entire program and never attend a retreat. However, they're open to you as students and they're open to alums. And we have participant, uh, uh, students who have been to, you know, four retreats in different countries on different continents. And we have students who have not attended and, and plan to attend it when it comes to a theater near them. So these retreats are wonderful. They are two retreats a year, usually around three days long, where we chat and uh, dance and do yoga and there are lectures and presentations and uh, hands-on activities things that we cannot do when we are uh, online and this is how we gain the benefits of retreats with or in-person interactions without losing the benefits of uh, of uh, the online flexibility now, I often say this to students, the material in the program is amazing. I mean, how can it not be? When you're reading Aristotle and Helen Keller and Martin Seligman and Sonia Lubomirsky and Lao Tzu and Marianne Evans, how, how can it not be amazing and interesting and, and fascinating. It's, you know, the greatest minds and hearts in, in human history, East, West, North, and South. However, the material is not the most important part in this program. The most important part in this program is the community. So here is the relational well-being part of the SPIRE model. Number one predictor of happiness, and there's a lot of research to back that up, is quality time we spend with people we care about and who care about us. It's about social support. Whether you're looking on a national level, happiness, the happiest countries in the world are countries that value or cultures that value relationships or on the individual level. People who prioritize relationships. And again, what relationships actually matters less as long as there are relationships. It could be romantic, it could be family, it could be friends, it could be 
um, work relationships or some combination of the above? Relationships matter. And what we're doing as part of this program through the weekly online get-togethers, through the happiness accountability team meetings, through the retreats, we're creating a community of like-minded and like-hearted people who want to make a difference in their own lives and in the lives of others, who want to raise levels of well-being in our global village. Before I go into the, the courses, important to keep in mind, the Masters in Happiness Studies is fully accredited. It's accredited by the highest accrediting body. It's the same body, middle states, that accredits, for example, Princeton University or University of Pennsylvania, UPenn. And we went through the process. It wasn't an easy process. Why? Because there are no precedents. There is no Masters in Happiness Studies anywhere else in the world. There is a positive psychology, but that's not Happiness Studies. So we had to go through very rigorous um, process in order to get the program accredited, which of course we did, and we are offering it with the following structure. So there are eight, well, there are really 10 courses, but there is an A and a B, so it's eight courses. So it's about eight courses that span across the 30 uh, credits. The first course, as you come in, Foundations of Happiness Studies, you get an, you know, an overview. You also better understand what your path is going to look like for the next uh, uh, 20 months. You already start applying from day one. You already start applying the, um, the, the material. And then you move on to a course which is about leadership. And you study leaders from different domains. And it's from uh, uh, leaders in academia and leaders in business and uh, leaders in education and political and religious leaders. And you study these leaders and see how they apply these ideas in their lives, in their domains. Then this is a course that takes the foundations course and we go deep, we go really deep. This is an interdisciplinary course where we look at how the different disciplines, such as psychology, such as neuroscience, such as history, such as uh, literature, how all these different disciplines inform us about how we can increase our own happiness and the happiness of others. So this is where a lot of things come together. But it's really the beginning because the next step you ask, okay, so how do I take this and apply? How do I apply what I learned from, you know, Shakespeare, what I learned from uh, Marianne Evans, or what I learned from Sonia Lubomirsky and Marty Seligman, positive psychologists, and apply it as a coach or a therapist, as a parent, as a manager? How do I apply these ideas in my personal, and my professional life. Next course looks at what the great philosophers in history, and I mentioned a few of them, it's Aristotle and Lao Tzu, and it's, um, and it's uh, you know, Helen Keller, Confucius, and, uh, and Robert Nozick. What do these philosophers, and Terry Wright Trent, what do these philosophers and their ideas have to teach us? And we're gonna look at philosophers from Europe and Asia and Africa and the Americas. We look at philosophers from all over the world and how they can inform our understanding, our deep understanding of what does it mean to lead a good life. Then there is a course on the Spire Retreat. This is where you apply these ideas, continuing from facilitating happiness and the other courses that are very much applied. But here you apply it to your life. Now, when we call it a spy retreat, it doesn't mean that you're going to have to travel. This is a retreat that you create at home. So I, like others, created a room, which is our retreat space. And that's where we, um, we do our meditations. 
or where we do our journaling or where we apply the different exercises that we learned about on a personal level. The next course, each week we watch a film, we read a short story, we read a poem, and we discuss it in depth. And it's amazing how much we can learn from art and how the ideas from art, again, whether it's film, whether it's a poem, or whether it's a short story, how our ideas from art stick. Because we remember stories a lot better than we remember research. So this is another way of reinforcing beyond the fact that these are you know, great movies that we're watching or great poems that we are reading. They also help us internalize the content. And finally, uh, we have a course on coaching. So with the SPIRE retreat, you applied everything to your life. How can you increase your level of happiness? Coaching, you coach one another. You help one another so that you can help others. And again, you don't need to be a professional coach to use it. It can be about coaching your, you know, your daughter or coaching a colleague at work. So this is in a nutshell, the, um, the course. Now, I kept on saying, um, we go through. One of the things that, um, that um, I emphasize to our uh, students from day one is that I'm going through the course, the courses with them. And in fact, when I send letters out and when, when I address them, I always call them fellow journeyers because we are on this journey together. And um, we learn about the ideas, the theory of happiness studies, but even more so, we apply these things. And as we go along the journey, when we share what we have applied, with others, whether it's in our head groups or in the larger groups, we learn from one another and we continue to grow. And this journey does not end when the program ends because of the retreats, because we have weekly get togethers online that graduates can attend. So essentially when you're joining a master's degree in happiness studies, yes, it's a 20 month long program, 30 credits, there's a beginning and an end to it in its official capacity. However, in its formal capacity, at the same time, you can remain, and hopefully you will, a part of this community going forward for as long as you wish. Because as I mentioned before, the most important part of being part of this program is not the academic part, which is wonderful. It really is. It's the community that is formed. And together, as a community, we can do so much more. I'm going to hand it over now to Don Homer, who uh, is um, responsible for the enrollment. And um, Don has been uh, with us from the very beginning. We started working um, on enrolling, getting people in, and uh, I'm uh, very, very proud to be uh, working with her and uh, to have her here as a colleague and a dear, dear friend. So Dawn, can you please uh, join us? Yes. Thank you so much, Tal. Thank you. Appreciate that. You got tears coming down my face, as always. <laughs> you say the nicest things. Welcome, everybody. My name is Dawn Homer. I actually been with Centenary University. I just had an anniversary last Friday that Tal doesn't know about. I've been here 25 years at Centenary University. Huge. <laughs> yeah, I was a baby when I started here. <laughs> With that said, I'm also an alumni of Centenary as well. So I decided to stick around after I got my degree. And I just love working with students. And that's why I'm here to help every single one of you. So the reason for me being on today, you will be working with me on a weekly basis, once I receive an application or an inquiry, you will hear from me by email. Um, basically, I do not have an international line, so I do apologize for that. But again, email works best for me, and I'm sure it does for you as well with the, all the different time zones too, as far as the international students. 
So basically what happens once you do apply, you will get an email from me on the next step. So this is what I wanted to talk about with you as far as the mission requirements of the university. So basically once I receive the application, um, you're asked to request this. Is, and we're gonna start with US students first because it's a little bit simpler process. I ask of you to request all of your official transcripts from your bachelor's degree. So basically what that means is if you've attended more than one school for your undergrad, I will need them all. Because why I need them is because it goes towards your overall GPA, which is a 2.5 or higher, okay? So as far as the US students, it's a very simple process. If you earned your master's degree, and that's easier for you to, to request those over your bachelor's degree, you have the choice to do that as well, okay? So most of the colleges or universities today now send them electronically. I usually receive them within 24 hours. It's a pretty quick turnaround. If they don't offer that service, then I ask you to have them mailed and my address is there. Of course, it's on my email as well, so you don't have to jot down this information. So there's two ways actually of sending your official transcripts to me, okay? I cannot accept a student copy. They have to be official. If they're being mailed, they have to be in a sealed envelope. Okay, so that's really important. You can't just email me and say, here's my transcripts, I need officials. So for the international students, it's a little bit different. So once you receive an email from me, it'll have it'll state all, all the following. What I need for you to do is to contact your university, basically have your, the university send your transcripts to World Education Services, which is located in New York City, okay? The web link is there, but you see in front of you, the www.west.org. Your college will then send them to New York. You as the student will have to pay for the service. What I do need is a course by course evaluation with a letter grade, and also your overall GPA is asked of you. This process does take about two months to complete, just so you do know. You can expedite it quicker if you do pay the extra service fee, but people that have applied in December, I am now just getting their transcripts. So I just wanna keep that very clear. This process does take one to two months to complete. So that would be for all international students, and you could do it either for your master's or for your bachelor's degree, whichever is easier for you. Second part of this is we do need an English proficiency test. Why? Because the degree is completely in English. So what I've been telling the students over the last three starts is basically it's best probably to do the Duolingo test because it seems to be a little bit quicker. The uh, this passing score, just so you all know, is 100 to pass the exam. If you have done a TOEFL in the past or an else, I can accept those too. You can also send those to me as well. Once I receive the two documents from you, then I can then move forward, review your application, you know, review your transcripts. If your GPA is good and everything is good with your English exam, I then move forward and I actually admit you. So this is basically the application process. Um, then what leads from there is you'll get your login credentials and on how to register. I will step you through that process as well. Once you're officially registered, then we sit and we wait for the classes to begin. Our next start is April 29th, which is right around the corner. <laughs> I'm super, super excited, but we're gonna leave it for open questions in the chat box. Um, if you do have questions about the mission requirements, I'll be happy to help. Thank you very much, Don. You're and, welcome. Uh, and um, I didn't go through the uh, admissions process, but everyone who's gone through the admissions process and that I've spoken with um, just raves about Don and how she literally will take you through and lead you through uh, the process uh, seamlessly, easily, and with... Uh, much joy and happiness. So thank you, Dawn, for that. Let me just answer one question that came up. You yes. do not need to do the English exam if your transcripts, if you reside, what does this say I'm saying? I'm sorry. You hold a master's degree from the United States. Do I still need to provide language? But no, the answer is no to that. And Dawn, if I may ask a question, so and if they 
uh, graduate from a university in uh, uh, Australia or England or, you know, India in English. India. They, they do not, they know they, they do, do not, not need. need. They do not Correct. need a, a, a TOEFL or Duolingo. Okay. So it's just from non-speaking English countries and degrees. Canada, I do not either. Somebody just asked yeah. from Canada. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Don. Um, I'm going to... And again, if you have questions for Dawn, either uh, you know send it to her through the chat, or she'll be answering questions with us uh, live soon. But I'm going to hand it over to Henrique, uh, who's uh, one of the amazing faculty members in uh, in our program. Henrique, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tao. It's so nice to be here. And Tao, I actually have to say that while I was listening to, to this introduction, I was actually pinching myself because I remember participating in a call just like this 10 years ago, asking myself, you know, um, how do we start this journey? Um, and I can't believe and I am so honored and so proud that today I can be with you and to participate in this amazing uh, program, the, the happiness, the Masters in Happiness Studies. And one thing that I find, at least connecting this a lot with my country, is that when I started to learn uh, this field of happiness studies, um, it was a little bit difficult to talk about this subject in organizations, in schools. People thought that there was some sort of separation between the topics. Um, and once I started this about um, eight years ago, I for initially just started to talk about it, just to bring the subject to schools, to universities, to public officials here in Brazil, like the the um, judici the courts, um, the public prosecutors, and many others. And after a few years, and mostly after the pandemic, the growth of this field is unbelievable. Um, today, most of the organizations that I started to talk about uh, this idea of happiness and happiness at workplace, that at the beginning, they felt a little bit strange about bringing this subject to the organization. Now I have full on um, long projects, like some of them I've been running for one year, for two years, for two years, on how do we train people for them to become protagonists in their own well-being and happiness. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of this mental health crisis we're living, uh, most organizations, most uh, companies I've been talking to, they started to deal with this, fighting the consequences. So they started to bring something from the outside. They would bring a therapist, they would bring a massage room, they would bring something to make the environment a little bit better for the employees, which is good, which is amazing. And I always tell the organizations to keep on doing this. But as Tao said at the beginning, we get used to these things. So organizations that are bringing things from the outside to make the environment better for the employees, they're finding that after a few times that the employee used those venues, for example, a decompression room, a massage on a Wednesday and things like that, they get used to this, these things and they go back to their level that they were before. So if we don't teach people that there are some ways, and we have this beautiful science that shows us what we can do. If we don't teach people how we can broaden our perspective and really behave in a way to build new habits and by doing this, not just impact my own well-being and the well-being of others, um, we're not going to be able to really change uh, uh, an organization culture. And because I have started with this uh, work uh, some years ago, now there are lots of organizations uh, bringing this subject forward. And the beauty of this is that by bringing this very serious work of creating happier workplaces, um, we are creating happier families, happier individuals, and really uh, spreading this, this knowledge uh, further. When I started, um, I tended to bring um, start a conversation in an organization saying that I had a project on well-being, or um, um, something that I wouldn't say the word happiness before. And now I make a point of always saying that what I do is about happiness. And the first thing we do in organizations, in schools, universities, is break the myths about what happiness is all about. So 
we start to create um, a new um, a new way for people to understand what happiness is, and then these projects just grow and grow. Um, what I can tell now about uh, Brazil and lots of countries in Latin America that I have been doing uh, many works is that um, this field is growing in a crazy pace. Um, now we have people doing uh, work in happiness, not just in as, as coaches, as therapists, but a lot of doctors are bringing this holistic view of, of health to their, their, their uh, clients and schools in Brazil, universities in Latin America that I've been, have been working with um, are bringing this topic. So it's growing pretty fast. I can say that um, some of the drivers humanity have at this time are longevity, health, and happiness. So it's a field that is growing very fast. Um, there's a lot of opportunity. And I see from all my students um, from courses here in Brazil and from my students on the MA as well that I've been interacting is that not just the impact that we bring to our own lives, but a lot of people, are, most people actually are doing something after, either in their own work, if they are managers in an organization, they're bringing this topic to, to the work that they have, or they're creating new ways to, to uh, implement. Um, I see many applications, web applications, mobile phones applications. I see a lot of new startups coming from this field, um, a lot of uh, new training programs and projects. So it's growing pretty fast and I'm really um, amazed and honored to have started this and to be part uh, of this group. And I really can't wait to meet all of you um, in this new cohort or in the next cohort of the MA in Happiness Studies. It has transformed my life and I can't believe that I can be again uh, with Shiri and with everybody that, that are from the MA to be uh, reading this, uh, reading and, and, and um, getting in more, more, a deeper sense of all this amazing content and the connections that we create here in, in HSA. Thank you. Thank you, Henrika. This is uh, wonderful. It's a privilege to have you uh, on our um, on our team as a fellow journeyer. And, you know, just a couple of things that you that you mentioned. One, you mentioned, you know, the three uh, pronged chair of uh, health, longevity and and happiness. And of course, they are very much uh, related. So throughout our program, we talk about uh, uh, happiness and physical well-being is about physical health and the interconnectedness of well-being and longevity. You know, looking at things like uh, the blue zones, looking at the mind-body connection, um, and, and the list goes on of connections that we make that we make there. And the second thing that I wanted just to relate to quickly is um, you said that you found real growth and development in the field. And you know, for years people have asked me, you know, I've been in this field for. 25, 30 years uh, have asked me, so, you know, when is it going to have the impact? And I would always draw on work that uh, is described by Malcolm Gladwell in The Tipping Point, where the way change happens is slow, 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 and then very fast. So there is a tipping point. In other words, it looks like an exponential function, slow, 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 and then suddenly it, it takes off. Today, when people ask me about it, I say we're already, we've already taken off. So the rate of change in this field is, is unparalleled, unmatched. And we're seeing so much more demand for it right now, not in the future, right now, from businesses, from schools, from um, cities, municipalities, districts, even countries, realizing just how important it is to focus on well-being as a pathway to health, longevity. Um, so um, thank you for that, Henrique. And now I'm uh, I'm honored to uh, call a fellow journeyer, uh, Shiri, who uh, is uh, about to graduate with the first ever cohort of master students in happiness studies. Wonderful to see you, Shiri. So thank you for having me. And it's wonderful to see all the people from all over the world that are joining us. And I don't want it to end. So I think I will sign again and again and again. And we'll just do the MA again and again and again. Um, 
because the, the people that are part of this webinar right now, you are in for the treat of, of your life. So first of all, I'm looking at Enrique and I'm looking at Dawn and I'm looking at Ashley and I'm looking at you. And I remember when I started, like Dawn, I remember contacting you in the middle of the night and you're answering me back. So um, the amount of love and empathy and the connections that you make, it's like from the start. And as you were talking, I was writing two things for myself is that what happens in the MA program doesn't stay in the MA program. So people that are planning to sign in, you are for the journey of your life. It's not going to ever end. And you need to take that into consideration because once you start it, uh, it's going to be as Tal says, the ripple effect of goodness. You're just going to bring it more and more and more around you to your family, to your community, to your workplace, with your kids, with anyone that you come in contact with. Um, I can share a, a personal story. I was in uh, Miami, actually, I was going to this museum and you know that like, uh, they have discount for students. So I was asking if I get a discount because I'm doing an MA in happiness. So I see the woman, she's like, her eyes are lit up. She's like, happiness? Where do you study happiness? So basically 10 minutes afterwards, I was giving her all the information. So your happiness as a concept is different from happiness as an, as an emotion. So the other thing that I was thinking about it is that um, regarding happiness or the MA in happiness is that you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave because it's something that will go with you forever and ever and ever. Um, my experience, my personal experience from the MA program is not only that I'm doing it in the privacy of my home, but I'm in contact with people from all over the world. And you are creating this community, this tribe, this family that hasn't doesn't have any boundaries. It's universal. Everybody can be part of it. It's not gender based. It's not culture based. It's not religion based. It's not age based. It's nothing based. It's open to everybody that really wants to make a difference, not only for them, but also for the world. And it's an idea of um, happiness that comes as a whole being. And, and I'm using now terms that if you will choose the, the, to take the program, you will understand what I'm talking about. Um, but it's this international universal community of people that are working together. So on one hand, you have the option like to, to work on your own pace. As Tal was saying, it's 15 hours a week, uh, but you can play with that. It's very open, like you get the assignments at the beginning of the week and you can put it in your schedule. But the other thing is that you have this accountability team. So you're not on your own. There's always people that meet together and talk. And the other thing I can tell you from my own MA program is that communities are being raised in communities. So for example, um, some students were really, were, were really interested in the philosophy part. So they started their own webinar and they meet once a week to talk about the philosophers. Um, there is a community around meditation. So you're all the time connected with other people. Um, we are gradu I'm graduating in uh, May 1st. I I'm a little bit sad um, to, end to end this. Uh, but we're going to have a retreat and people are coming from all over the world. And I, as I said, I can't see, I can't wait to see your legs and to really hug you the way it's supposed to be. Um, so I don't know why people are waiting. People just need to go and sign because there is nothing better that you can offer to yourself and to the world, basically. And you didn't pay me to say that, by the way. <laughs> so, you know that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Sherry. So uh, so wonderful to 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 hear that, and I must say I'm also sad that you're you're graduating. Um, so you know we have uh, just a few more weeks left before a uh, couple of months maybe before graduation, and um, however however as you said and and you know and as Henrique and I have said, uh, this is not a you know program with a start and finish in the traditional sense. Yes, you'll get your certificate, you'll get your MA. However, you're with us for as long as you want to be. And I'm emphasizing as long as you want to be, we're not gonna stalk you. So if you wanna leave after two years, by all means, but if you're prepared and willing to stay to be part of the journey, um, we're here. And the nice thing about the community is that, you know, if someone wants to uh, create a, a workshop or a program in their in their work, they reach out to the community. They reach out to us, uh, the, the, the faculty members. And together, 
again, it, we do it much better together. Together, we, we you know we we help them build uh, something which is effective, which which works. Um, so yes, it's not really goodbye. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to open it up um, to you for your questions and the way to ask questions. I know I I, I can't uh, follow the uh, the chat. Uh, as, as as I would like to, but I know that there are questions being asked and answered on the chat. But if you want to ask a question, um, you can put your hand up. So go down to reactions and click on um, you know on hand up, and um, and I will uh, call on you. And you can ask again. A question can be about every, anything. It can be about content ideas in happiness. It can be about the enrollment process. And we have, uh, you know, uh, Enrique and also Professor Ashley Michael here uh, to to answer questions. Who is uh, who probably knows the program better than anyone else does because she really does, you know, go into the design and the uh, and QA and and everything in between uh, of the program. So she'll be able to answer uh, your your questions. Um, and, um, Paul, and, before uh, you start with the, the two students questions, there is a question that was earlier, um, about the sending the transcripts to Wes, if they still have time to do that, because I know that Dawn had said that it can take a long while. So some students were concerned that they had to wait to the next cohort. There's still time for them to submit yes. those. Is that correct for this cohort? Yes. So I just wanted the, to clarify that. So people didn't think they have to wait. Yeah. So really, uh, as soon as possible. And and again, we'll we'll help you with the uh, with the process. But yes, if you if you do want to join this cohort, which I hope you will, uh, please start the process uh, right now. Um, thank you, Ashley. Okay, so let's open it up. Uh, Kristen, you have your hand up. Hi, Tal. How are you? Good to see you. Um, I just good to see you as well. I just had a quick question because I joined the um, certificate in happiness studies in the October cohort. So I'm just curious how it works if I start the MA now. Like, do I just continue with the certificate? Is there overlap? Do I duck out for two of the courses in the MA? So just to understand what that process looks like if I move forward with the uh, the master's degree. Yeah. Thank Thank you, Kristen. And and sure. let me answer this question in in general. Um, also for those of you who are thinking, do I do the certificate or do I do the um, uh, the master's or both? Um, so the certificate essentially emerged from, not chronologically, not in, in terms of time, but, but, but in terms of the idea, it emerged from the master's degree, meaning it is a part of the master's degree. So if you take the certificate now, and then decide. Actually, I you know I, I want to expand my 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 understanding. Go go in deeper. You can start the master's degree. It means that however much you paid for the certificate will be deducted from your payment of the master's degree. Um, because there is overlap, and you know we're not going to obviously double charge you. Um, the certificate program courses are Introduction to Happiness Studies, if you remember, this is the second course that I shared, and Facilitating Happiness Studies, which is the fourth course that I shared on that list of eight. The master's degree does go in deeper. The outline is the same. You look at the spire elements, you look at uh, different interventions that you can um, uh, that you can apply. However, you go in deeper, you also write papers, which you do not in the certificate program, at least not papers that you submit and are graded. You have a final project. And I'm going to say a few words about the final project in a minute. Um, and um, and you have more interactions with your fellow journeyers as part of the HAT, Happiness Accountability Team Groups, so that we really make sure that you introduce these changes to your personal life and your uh, um, professional life to the micro level and the macro level. You know, just like in economics, you study microeconomics and macroeconomics. Here we study micro happiness and macro 
happiness. Um, so many of our students, uh, not the majority, but many of our students have done the certificate program and are now doing the master's program. And what they're saying is that it just helps them dig deeper, even when it comes, you know, the, the, the new courses are new courses, but even the courses that have already taken as part of the certificate, they're just delving deeper, understanding it at a, at a higher level than they did before. You know, that's why I, you know, I've, I've been through the certificate program multiple times. And obviously I go through the MA program each time with you, um, every time that that's why I emphasize it's a lifetime process not a you know zero month you know zero and month 20 and you're done um so yeah i, I hope that answers your 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 question Kristen. yeah and, and just i just would just keep continuing with the certificate and then just concurrently add in no if you start the masters you may you may just so we've had a couple and and who were in the middle of the certificate and started and they actually just stopped the certificate and and went on with the and then they oh, went okay. back to the certificate. I mean, they covered the same material later on anyway. Okay. So, okay, just trying to understand just yeah. the course if I'm the doing logistics, relevance. right? Yeah, exactly. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Kristen. Now, um, I I mentioned a few words about a final project, and 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 I want to say something about it because it has to do with uh, something that Cherry mentioned. So one of my colleagues, Megan McDonough, um. Paul calls these projects not final projects, but rather forever projects. Why? Because, you know, a final project is something you hand in and you're done with the course. Forever projects live on. Why do they live on? Because all of our projects, no exception, the, fi the, the, the end final projects are things like a lecture that you prepare or a workshop that you put together or a, uh, a class curriculum that you design. But there are all things that you can actually use later, whether it's as a parent, whether it's as a coach, whether it's as a manager, whether it's as a, a public speaker facilitator. And we have found already many of our students who have not yet graduated are already using this material as part of their work in their families because these projects are meant to be with you for as long as you live. And that's why we don't just have a, you know, you write a final paper, you know, you submit it, you get your grade and, you know, next. Not at all. These final projects you get feedback on or feed forward on from fellow juniors, from professors. And then hopefully you continue uh, applying it, using it, sharing it. As we, as we say in our program, not paying it forward, but serving it forward. Yes, Enrique. Just a, just a brief comment. There's a question from Jacqueline in the chat about the professional paths, path of this discourse. And I will just connect to what I learned from you and I apply from what I learned from you is that uh, the course is um, a lifetime journey. So it is the, the application for your own life are endless. But the career paths as well are just um, not just growing a lot, but it's a matter of where you want to apply because the, the possibilities are pretty endless. I remember you even say that that the choice or, or, of how to apply professionally is of the student because there it's limitless. So if you want That's to right. just comment on that a moment, it would be great. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Enrique, for bringing it up. And um, and and as, as I mentioned, you know, and our students are applying it in their workplace as managers, they're applying it in their workplace as school teachers, as therapists, as medical professionals. And it really is, um, is endless. Thank you. Thank you. So I see that, is it, um, is it Shana? Shana, you have your, you, you have your hand up. If you can unmute yourself, please. Oh. Uh, sir, I want to ask a question from you. Hi. <clears throat> hi. Hi. First of all, hi. I want to ask a question from you. That it is a free course or a paid course. And uh, we will get certificate because you are uh, of this class. 
Yes. Th thank you for that. So, Shaina, um, the MA degree is uh, is paid. So the uh, the tuition, and I think this was uh, in the chat, the tuition is um, for the 20 months, for the whole degree, um, $17,700, which you pay as you go along. So each course that you sign up to, you you, you pay for. So it's essentially in... Uh, um, installments over those uh, those 20 months. Thank you for your question. Um, so we we'll get scholarship for uh, the yes. course? Oh, scholarship. scholarship. scholarship for the Great course. question. Um, we're working on it, Shane. Right now, we do not have a scholarship. Again, we're a new program, uh, you know, get, getting off the ground, but we certainly are working on scholarships. So hopefully in future years, will be able to uh, to offer those. At this point, uh, unfortunately not. Thank you. Um, Denise. Hello, can you Hi. hear me? Loud and clear. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, no, I'm really freaking out to be taking part tonight here in this amazing journey at this starting. Um, I'm from Venezuela, but I'm right now in Vienna. Uh, mm. Yes, it's a kind of mixation, no? So we're traveling around. It's, it's amazing at the same time. And oh, I'm really, I really get acquainted to this subject, uh, emotional intelligence, of Matthew Seligman, um, because I took part in a small course uh, by Coursera, uh, and it was amazing. That's how I discovered this huge world of emotions, when especially Martin Seligman, on, wow, I don't know, it was time something ignited inside me, and that's why I'm really, I'm really anxious on waiting uh, for this time, for this opportunity, maybe, maybe to be part of, of this great journey for the future, and it's amazing, for sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Denise. You know, you mentioned um, Daniel Go uh, emotional intelligence and uh, Daniel Goleman. So I remember yes. reading his book when I was a student. This was back in 1994. And uh, he talked about how emotional intelligence is, you know, this new thing. It's a new concept that, uh, um, you know, that, that academics uh, were, were talking about. And he said that... Um, Many organizations refer to it as, you know, the soft skills. Yes. Because, you know, the hard skills is, you know, it's finance. And the hard skills is, uh, you know, can, can you, uh, can you, can you, um, you know, use an Excel uh, a sheet? Can you calculate ROI, return on investment, revenues? So these were the hard skills. The soft skills were, um, can you increase levels of well-being? How about displaying empathy? How about knowing yeah. yourself? And he yes. talked about this in 1994. So this was exactly, right, 30 years ago. Today, more and more organizations are realizing that these soft skills matter a lot. In fact, it could make all the difference between a, a thriving and a floundering organization, yeah. between a successful and an unsuccessful career. Not to mention classroom and, and family. And this is uh, an important point that we emphasize and that our you know, students emphasize. And that is happiness as a general term. Well-being is not just nice to have, whether it's for a school or an organization. It's not just a nice to have. It's a competitive advantage. And especially today, when what we're looking for in organizations, we're looking for, you know, creativity, innovation. It's essential. Well, if you increase levels of happiness, even by a little bit, creativity, innovation levels go up significantly. Um, teamwork matters a lot. Because today there is so much information out there. No one person can handle it all. You need to do it together. Again, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. Well, we know that if, if you increase levels of well-being by a little bit, teamwork improves significantly. Mm -hmm. um, 
we know today that people are distracted. We know that people are likely to leave their workplace um, much more so than in the past. Well, we know that if you increase levels of well-being, happiness, even by a little bit, engagement levels go up. Our ability to focus and concentrate go up significantly, mm -hmm. and people are much more likely to stay in their workplace. Yeah. So this is why happiness, the science of happiness, is no longer just a luxury. It's actually a very good investment for the individual, for the organization, and even if you look at uh, some of the macro happiness studies, even for a nation. Um, thank you, Denise, for, for sharing. Have a wonderful trip in Europe. And um, are there any other questions before we, um, we, we say goodbye? So maybe Ashley, you know, while, while people are thinking they have other questions, and maybe you can share a little bit about uh, your your experience initially as a student in the certificate program and now as a as a professor. Sure, absolutely. Um, and you know what I was just thinking about this, what I would say. And <laughs> what I was thinking about is it has been so incredible, and Enrique, I'm sure can and to attest to this as can you tell to have seen the students who are now about to graduate from the first cohort, their level of growth, the how much they've bonded together, how close they are, how they support each other, and how scared and nervous and unsure of themselves they were when they first started. They all came in, a very large portion of them came in with concerns about, I haven't done a master's degree in 30 years, or you know, this isn't the field I'm in, or all these other voices and things that they had in their head of why they weren't good enough or why they shouldn't be doing this, or you know, all those things that we go through. And every single one of them has prospered, has grown, has developed, and has experience this life transforming uh, experience. And so it's just been absolutely beautiful to watch as a professor. So that's the kind of thing that I, you know, the individuals that are listening to this, thank you for attending, um, but you, you're clearly interested in this program. And so that's what I'd ask you to raise your hand. If you do have questions, if you do have concerns, if there is a voice in your head right now, making you doubt whether or not you should sign up for this program, we are happy to answer the questions. We're happy if you join the program to work with you, to if you need additional help with certain things, we make office hours, we have Zoom calls, we work with you, your classmates work with you. We all get through this together to make you get through this process. So don't feel like you're gonna be on your own in some room online by yourself struggling. That is not how this program works. Um, it is a very supportive community and we hope you'll join us. So I don't know if anyone has questions, but that's just what I'd like to share. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I'm, I want to respond to a couple of questions uh, that were uh, in, in the chat. The first one, uh, uh, someone asked that they have a finance degree, if they can join any bachelor's degree works. You see, happiness studies is an interdisciplinary degree. We draw on economics and psychology and neuroscience and, uh, and philosophy. So we're not expecting you to be an expert in one specific domain. We do need, we do re, it is a master's degree. We do require a bachelor's, but any, any topic. And we do have many topics. I mean, actually, and Enrique, I think you know better that, than I, but we have, you know, we have students who graduate in psychology. We have students who have their first degree in education, nursing, uh, uh, history. We have PhDs in our program. Doctors, we have, uh, we have medical doctors. Medical doctors who have we decided have to, leaders. you know, we, had we have MBAs, of course. Politicians. In, in organizations, yeah, politics, politicians as well, yeah. Military, yeah. we have individuals from the military. military. We, I mean, basically we have everything. <laughs> so all, you're all yeah. welcome. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You will not feel out of uh, out of place, no, no matter, uh, <laughs> no, no matter what. Okay. Um, there was another question, and then I will call on you. Uh, I see, Cindy, you have your hand up. Um, there was another question about cultural differences. And um, the, um, so this is something that we pay a lot of attention to. Why? Because it's important in and of itself. You know, we're living in a, in a global village. But there's another uh, 
another reason. Because when you look at happiness, to understand it deeply, you need to understand it on three levels. The first level is universal. And that is that means that there are certain things, certain needs that are part of our nature. And they're the same in uh, the United States as they are in, uh, in, in Kenya, as they are in Australia, as they are in Japan. And they've always been that way. For example, physical exercise, we all need to move. That's a universal need. For example, a sense of meaning and purpose. We all need meaning in our lives, regardless of where we're from and when we're from, meaning when we lived or when we'll live. So that's the universal part of happiness. Second, there is the cultural part of happiness. You know, when it comes to a sense of meaning and purpose, for instance, you know, in the United States, Europe in general, it's much more about uh, individualism. You know, you look at Asia or Africa, it's much more about the collective. You know, one of the topics, uh, uh, always a class favorite, is we study about Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African term. We study the, the, the great living philosopher, Terry Wright Trent. And, um, and Desmond Tutu talked about it, Nelson Mandela talked about it, but Terry Wright Trent you know, goes deeply into the concept of Ubuntu, which is, I am because you are, meaning the interconnectedness of all people. So when you talk about a sense of meaning and purpose in Africa, it's different. Then when you talk about um, when you talk about it in the context of North American or expressing emotions, we all, you know, the E of spire, emotional well-being. We all experience sadness, we all experience joy, we all experience uh, anxiety, and we all experience love. But how we experience it and how we express the emotions is very different in China than it is in Colombia, for instance. It's not right versus wrong, it's different. So cultural differences are also important to understand. So we have the universal, we have the cultural, and then we have the personal. Because two people raised in the same household in Bogota, Colombia, will have different needs and wants. And we'll want to, you know, exercise in a different way and we'll uh, be, find meaning in different things and we'll express emotions differently. You know, we have three teenagers at home and I often say to my wife, isn't it amazing that the three of them are from the same production line? You know, so different, same production line because there are individual differences. And to understand happiness, you need to understand the universal such as the spire elements. You need to understand the cultural, the differences, and you then want to understand the individual. Now, for the universal and the cultural, we look at research, and we study a lot of research throughout this program. That's for the universal and the cultural. For the individual, we engage in me-search. So you have research, research, and me-search. And that's why a large part of the program is about self-awareness, about introspection, about journaling, understanding your unique self, because it is through your unique self that you better understand others. Um, Abraham Maslow said the following. He said, he who looks into the depth of his own mind has looked into the depth of all minds. So looking deep inside us helps us better understand the cultural and the universal. So we engage in research, and at the same time, we augment this with a lot of research. Okay, um, so Cindy, I see that you uh, have your hand up and that your cat is... Uh, walking, meandering behind you. So we talk about pets and how important they are for happiness. Was that your question or did you have another one? Uh, I, have an, I have a couple of questions actually. Um, first question is, will you be teaching all the classes or do we have, I guess there's various instructors? So the answer is yes and. 
Um, so yes, I teach all the classes and uh, Ashley and Henrique and whoever will be uh, um, part of the new uh, cohort as professors uh, also, also teach. But yes, I'm part of every single class. As I said, I'm going through this process um, with you. And what is your what are what are your qualifications? What are my qualifications? So I'm happy to send you my resume. Um, just <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to send your resume. Just no, 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 I'm, out I'm of curiosity. I I'm mean, kidding. what is so? No, it's it's a good question. So I knowledge? I started off um, back when when I was an undergrad as a computer science major, and I found myself in my second year as a sophomore. Um, doing very well academically uh, and very unhappy. And it was then that I switched. This was back in 1993. Uh, and that's when I switched to uh, from computer science to philosophy and psychology. And that's what my, my undergraduate is in that. Um, then I went over to England to uh, study education. And then uh, back to the US and I got my PhD in uh, organizational behavior, but it was, it's an interdisciplinary disciplinary, uh, PhD uh, where I studied for, at the business school and the psychology department and school of government where I studied ethics. So from the very beginning, I've been really attracted. I'm telling you this just because to share with it from the very beginning, I was really attracted to interdisciplinary studies. And um, when, when I started to teach positive psychology, that's when um, I felt like something was missing. I thought it was um, a too narrow a focus just looking at psychology. And um, I decided to expand beyond it and to incorporate philosophy and history and neuroscience and, uh, and, and literature and the list goes on. Okay, another question. Do we have to have a psychology background because obviously there's happiness, but there's a lot of things that, um, yeah. you know, life, ex I shouldn't say life experience, but maybe life traumas or just mm. um, obstacles to happiness. So is there, do we address yeah. those things? Good. No, it's, it's, it's a great question. So no, you do not need a background in psychology. Um, graduating from this program, you're not a therapist. So, you know, if someone has, a, you know, experienced trauma, or they have, and they have uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, or they experience, uh, um, or they, ex you know, they have uh, uh, anxiety, clinical depression. Um, you do not have the. Um, you'll you'll understand it better as a result of the degree. And I can you know I can give a whole lecture on you know anxiety or depression and certainly on trauma. Um, but you do not treat. You're not a clinical therapist. Um, you teach. You can become a coach, um, but if you are interested in becoming a, a therapist, uh, actually Centenary has amazing programs for uh, becoming therapists. And that was, um, you touched on just briefly, when we're finished with the program, what do people, what are some of the graduates, what are they going to be taking, yeah. you know, so, doing with this program? Yeah, I, I can share, but, you know, Henrique or, or Ashley, do you want to... Do you want to share some of uh, what our graduates are going to be doing or are already doing? Yes, but first I want to jump back a second because Tall is being super humble. So I'm going to step in and, and just like add in a little bit. So Tall has an undergraduate degree and a PhD from Harvard. He taught one of uh, two of the most popular courses at the university um, in positive psychology and positive leadership. And he is a leader in this field that is people go crazy over. So he, believe me, you will have an amazing, wonderful experience having him as your teacher um, in this program. And so I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Enrique, I will, I'll, you have been speaking about the different career options. So I'll let you lead off with that and I can add in, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm just just saying on top of all this this background uh, I never had I never thought I could have a teacher like Tao the way he teaches and connects uh, life um, with the field of, of of happiness studies is just unbelievable um, the the possibilities career rise are, are endless uh, you can um, work in your own career so if you're a business uh, owner or manager if you're a coach or for you can use all that you're, you're going to be learning uh, but also a lot of people in their forever projects, uh, they create 
new ideas of 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 how to apply it. So a lot of people create uh, build starts uh, startups in sometimes technology startups to uh, deliver the happiness studies concept and deliver uh, training or uh, meditation or something related to 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 happiness. Um, a lot of people design new ways to coach or design new uh, training. Um, uh, if they are school professors, they design ways to bring this topic to kids, to the families. Uh, if they're doctors, I have uh, many doctors that I graduated here uh, that from using the, the positive psychology and happiness tools, they started to treat in a, uh, the, the patients in a different way and get different results. So you can, you can oh, it's very open and you will be able during the course to find your niche and to really start to, to uh, design your way to, to use everything you're learning in a professional way. And I can add in that I know that some of the students, um, by very nature, this, as Tal mentioned in the beginning, this is the first of its kind. There are some other programs that are somewhat related, but there is nothing that's in the Master's of Happiness Studies. And so the second that individuals in their work find out that they're getting a Master's in Happiness Studies, they are then able to have that conversation with their employer about, hey, I'd like to generate this well-being program. Or the, the employer looks to them to take over being the chief well-being officer or the chief happiness officer or designing that kind of program. So we have students that have been going in that direction um, for you know big advertising agencies, things like that. Um, but it also, whatever your career is, whatever you're working on, it, there's, I cannot think of a single career where this doesn't enhance the situation. I myself have worked and have degrees in many different industries. Um, and so it's just, it relates so well to so many, so many different industries have this need. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to enjoy well-being. There's studies coming out about how businesses have an extreme competitive advantage when there's well-being in their organization and their employees are thriving and flourishing in that way. So this is something that is always going to give you a return on investment. If that's what you're looking for, um, right. I, that is not going to be a problem. You are going to get that return on investment in terms of your career, but not only on an, a career side, you're also going to get it more <laughs> tremendous. I don't, I'm a very bit like under promise over deliver. So I, I, but so I, I hesitate, but I, I've seen this so much with the first cohort and with the students in the second cohort. It, it just changes their personal lives too. It changes their perspectives. It teaches them how to make changes. That's something that's so hard to do. And this program is so focused on change and what that feels like and how you can do that. And, and it really, it, it, it's just, it really is life-changing. So <laughs> I, you will definitely get a return on investment if that's what your concerns on um, by all means. So I hope that we've answered your question in that regard. May, yes. may I add, as, as a student in the program and doing the master and paying the fee and going through all of this, um, my background is in psychology counseling and I used to work in schools and I already see the return because my school really wants me to go in and create this whole program for well-being. I don't know, you probably, if you are interested in this program and listening about the master, yeah. the raises of anxiety and depression all over the world are the worst yeah. that can be. Um, yeah. I personally, I did a lot of classes online. I did Martin Zeligman programs, certificate program. So I'm familiar with the PERMA. I did the Greater Good Science Center in Berkeley. I did um, Laurie Santos online, the science of well-being. Um, Tal is the best in my <laughs> eyes because it teaches, well, obviously, it teaches most profound, profound, but also this is an MA. People look differently when you're having a master program. It's different than doing a certificate. It's not the same level of diving in. It's not the same level of work. Uh, but the thing is that you can implement it everywhere. I see Jacqueline is asking about the endless possibilities. It doesn't matter what you do in the world. You can implement it in every place that you go because the world is in need. Um, the, uh, the chronic diseases and especially the mental diseases are so huge all over. Um, and there's another thing that since we're students from all over the world, I'm talking Vietnam and I'm talking China, I'm talking Colombia, like every part of the world. And we're all suffering from the same issues and from the same problems. And this is like the medicine, the remedy for everything, because you bring your own personality, but you also have a lot to offer. So it's so dis disciplinary that you can choose what you want to do. So in my mind, I'm really interested in education. I'm really interested in teenager. I'm really interested in post-traumatic growth. Uh, Tal already knows that I want to do the PhD. So mm -hmm. 
you start oh. and you never know. Yeah, you never know where it ends because this is, if you ask me, this is the field that is, this is the future. And right. the, the world needs healing. And this is what we are. This is the army of happiness that is going to fix the world, in my opinion. Maybe I'm too optimistic, but you know, <laughs> optimal, and I, optimal. No, that's perfect. Thank you. And if I can add one thing, because I saw it come up in the chat and Sherry just mentioned it also, um, you know, other individuals, particularly I'm sure many of the individuals that are listening to this right now have done other certificate programs. You know, they may have done Lori Santos program. They may have done, you know, Marty Seligman's, um, the positive psychology certificates. I have done multiple of those as well. And I'm in this program and I can tell you that it's not a repeat. This is a program that enhances all of that information. You will get mm. so much more from that. So if that's something that you're already interested in, this is just diving in deeper. You'll get a, a much more extensive information and tools that you'll be able to use. So it's not an, a thing of like an either or, it's really an and. We talk a lot about the genius of the and in this program. And this really is the and. This will make you stronger. This will make you a better practitioner. If this is something that you're interested in, and you've done other things in it, I promise you, you will not regret or feel that you're that this is duplicative. So, one more question. Yeah. This um, the class, me. do we meet uh, once a week? Yeah. So is it um, once a week? Can twice I ask? A week? So you you meet um, live once a week, and then you watch lectures that are pre-recorded and, uh, and you um and you also have readings you know at, at whatever time um again you, you make up your own schedule okay but uh, and, the live meeting in once and as i said even if you can't make it you know once or 20 times to the live meetings they are recorded so you can watch it later too and what day of the week is that? And how long is it? Is it yeah. two hours, usually, three hours? Yeah. It's usually a Thursday and um, and it's a 90 minute session. 90 minutes, okay. Okay. Tal, there you. was a student, right. Sarah, uh, Sarah, that had a question, but she ran. She went away. So Sarah, if you still have your question, we're happy to answer it. I don't know where you went. It was she had her hand up for a while. Yeah, Sarah. So if you're still um, out there, sorry no, we talked too long, but Sarah. We, we are... I saw that hand, Ashley, but we are out of time. You know, I, I promised my, you know, my team we won't go above 90 minutes. And I really, really want you to see that video. Um, so I'm uh, here, but if you want, if you don't want to take it, it's okay. No, okay. So how can I say no, really? Uh, <laughs> well, okay. two things. One is um, just relating back to the woman who asked um, your qualifications. I just wanted to say that um, I've been tracking your career and the impact that you've been having on this field uh, since you started the classes at Harvard. I've been teaching this for 25 years already in the context of um, advanced cancer and patients mm -hmm. um, who are fighting for their lives. So as a colleague, I, I take my hat off to you. The reason why I was potentially interested in the program was one, because you are teaching it. And to be able to learn from you um, on a weekly basis, as even a colleague, I think would be a tremendous opportunity. The other thing that you're doing that I find so fascinating is creating a community. And as the gentleman said earlier, we were just a wild band of thieves running around talking about happiness for a couple of decades. And to see that somebody has actually put together um, an accredited program that will bring together this energy of like-minded people around the world is so powerful. And so I just want to thank you and applaud you for everything that you're doing. The second thing is, I was curious, just as somebody that is a teacher in the field um, and having this motivation, one, to learn from you directly as a colleague and two, to be part of this crazy community. Do you think that it's going to be too basic that I should interact in a different way and humbly say maybe even be a guest lecturer? But do you think that the program will just, just be too basic for someone that's been doing this for 25 years? Um. Look, I'm going through okay. the program uh, myself every time. And, um, you know, let, 
I, I actually would like Ashley and Henrika to, to answer this question rather than me, but one of the things that we emphasize in this program is uh, the importance of the spiral theory of knowledge as opposed to the linear approach to knowledge. So the linear approach to knowledge would be, I'm learning something today and, um, you know, let's, um, and then, okay, you know, I, let's say, let's say literature. Okay. So I read uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, check. I can move on. Now I'm going to read The Tempest and now I'm going to read, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, Helen Keller. And I've read Helen Keller, so now I'm going to move on to Fitzgerald or to Chinu Akebe. Read him, moving on. As opposed to, this would be the linear theory of knowledge, as opposed to the spiral theory of knowledge, which is I read Hamlet. And a year later, I'm reading Hamlet again, but now I'm understanding it at a, at a deeper level than I did the first time. And after three years, I'm reading it again and again. So I've read, for example, Helen Keller's optimism essay. I don't know how many times, every time I read it, I understand something that I didn't, didn't understand before. I apply something that I didn't apply before. The same when I read Lao Tzu. I can't even tell you how many times I've read the Tao Te Ching. Unfortunately, not in Chinese, in English. Numerous times, a number of translations. Every time I read it, I, I feel elevated. So this is where I, I, I strongly believe, and this is our, our pedagogical approach, because you know we, we have the foundations of happiness studies, and then we go deeper when we talk about introduction to happiness studies. And you can be sure we go a lot deeper when we watch a movie that relates to the ideas that we talked about, you know, a year earlier, or when we apply it in, um, in our personal lives, when we do the spy retreat. So this is the approach, the spiral theory of no, rather than this. And that's why personally, I think there is a lot of value to going over, even if it is the same material, I can guarantee you that there'll be new material because again, this is an interdisciplinary uh, field. But even theoretically, if there was no new material, you could observe it with new eyes. So Henrique or Ashley, do you wanna add anything? So, I mean, one thing I would add, which you're gonna probably blush when I say this, but I is um, when, when we attended the, um, Wahasu, which is a conference um, on well-being, where a lot, many, many, uh, you know, leaders in the field of happiness and well-being speak, and we all, you know, saw all these different presentations. W one speaker after another, these very big names, which I won't say the names, but very big names that have been mentioned today throughout the courses, referred back to Tall, referred back to his concepts, referred back to what he said in his presentation, his speech. Um, so I do not think that even if you have have a very long storied career in this space, that you will not gain information from this program. It is a very, very dense um, exp experiential program that I think that just trying the different elements of it, everything like that in and of itself is very eye-opening and transformational, but also mm -hmm. the level of the spiral theory of knowledge, going and revisiting these concepts and, and working through them, I think that you will get a tremendous amount from the program. Additionally, I'll just add that, um, there's many different individuals who are have you know have done the um, the MAP program or have done other um, masters in um, positive psychology programs or other similar things who are in this program who feel that this program adds to what they've already learned. They don't feel that it's repetitive or that it's a duplicative kind of situation. So I do feel that it would be very beneficial to you, and that because you have a base, you'll probably go into a much deeper level of knowledge um, than where you already are. So I think it's a huge advantage, but you have to decide for yourself what works best for you, but we would love to have you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank, thank you for you. that. Um, in terms, That's just in terms of research is, um, Can I'm, ask doing question? Research in this, I'm doing research in this field also, just wondering if there's opportunities within the program to further the research that, that I'm interested in, in the field. Um, so the, the answer is yes. Again, there is um, 
a lot of flexibility in terms of the actual projects that you do as part of uh, of the program. And um, and again, you take it to where you want to take it, both in terms of your, whether it's personal interest or uh, research interest. Um, um, we're very flexible and we're very flexible for a very simple reason, because we know that, you know, what you're most interested in is what you'll do best in and what will have the most impact on your life and by extension on others. And again, as I said at the beginning, I would not be, te I don't think Ashley or Henrique would be te teaching this program if we didn't do it because of the impact that it can have on individuals Thank and communities. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, I know we have two hands up. You know, Shane, I see your hand, Denise, I see your hand, but we are over time and I would like to to show that video. So I'm going to uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say goodbye um, and um, with that video, but before before I do, just a very big thank you to you for being here. Um, a very big thank you to um, Centenary University that is it's just an amazing place, you know, and a, and, and a home. Um, I saw that, um, you know, Bruce Murphy, who was the president when when we launched this program, was was on this call and Dale Caldwell, who's the president today and um, and uh, Dawn for your amazing work. And thank you to the professors and thank you to my colleagues at the Happiness Studies Academy. Who are uh, uh, making dreams come true for so many of us. Thank you. God bless you. You. And uh, I'm going to end now with the video. The video is of uh, um, basically a, a medley, a collection from our retreats uh, from different places, uh, as I mentioned, from China and Italy and Miami. And um, I think uh, also Colombia is, is on there. And again, these retreats um, are don't have to be part of the MA program but uh, they can certainly be uh, a part, a fun part, enjoyable part of, uh, of your life. I hope you join us. Take good care. Bye-bye. Coming to an H HSA retreat is absolutely amazing. Uh, to me, the word that comes to mind the most is connection. So the retreat has been great. We're really connecting, having lunch with people, just the conversations we're having. I actually have found a mentee that I'm going to be working with. I now have a whole bunch of new friends. It's just great. I can't wait for the next one. For me, it was uh, life changing, knowing very authentic and generous people from all over the world just open up my imagination to so many possibilities it makes me just want to improve in so many areas I didn't even know about. It's just a wonderful experience. It's an experience that I would recommend to anybody. This is my third retreat. And definitely I will be next year in the next retreat, uh, whatever it is. And people of HSA are really a huge family. I recommend everyone to come and to have this experience. It's a new, unique experience, you have to do it. There's so much packed into like three days. Yeah. And there's still more to come. The community is just unbelievably good. You get in here and you know you've got fantastic support in every which way possible. Didn't expect
expect such a level of preparation and it is just mind-blowing you, you, you know they are treated uh, treating us like princesses and princes or like I'm coming for the best um, date of my life People hug each other, they smile to each other, they support each other, which is amazing because this is not something you can learn. Such a passion towards other people can only come if you have the happiness in your heart and that you care for other people. And the HSI community is the community of people who care for others.